Uh, usually he's running, but today he will do the presentation. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Uh, uh, I wanted to do just a short presentation today uh, about the job that is done by a couple of people. Uh, most of us uh, only see it on the briefings, but it takes more time. I wanted to tell a little bit about task setting, how it works, who, who's involved in this job, and also later I would like to describe you a little bit the different roads, how to choose your own road, uh, how does the, the road optim optimization work, so that's the main topic of my presentation today. Uh, okay, as I said, I will talk a little bit about task setting first and later about road optimization. Uh, here on the picture you see one of the tasks of uh, this year's European Championships. Uh, we are flying there mostly on the flatlands. Uh, so I will tell you also a little bit how it works on the flatlands, like here in Macedonia where Martin is from. And a little bit also about mountains, uh, like here in uh, Slovenia, in Socha Valley. Uh, so basically, how all those tasks are set, we are flying like we had today or two days ago. Uh, normally, on the most of competitions, uh, behind all the tasks are three, four people, uh, chosen either by the organizer, how it works here, uh, the people to in task committee were chosen by probably Gasper and the rest of the organization team. Uh, the people who are the designing the task are the most experienced here. They know Aria best, so they they are capable of doing this uh, most important, uh, most interesting and safe tasks uh, on more like I would say not serious competitions, but uh, uh, higher level competitions. Uh, normally, task committees are chosen due, uh, due, during the voting, so uh, there is some people chosen by the organizers, same as here, uh, but also there, are, uh, there is voting and other rest of the task committee is chosen by voting. Uh, here we can see on the picture task committee from the last year's Polish, Czech and Slovakian championships. Uh, here is Stefan Viparina, who is also here helping uh, with designing the task. And we have here very uh, many good pilots who are very often on the highest level of the comps designing tasks. Uh, what do we need to know before the, any of the tasks are set? Uh, so, first of all, before the first task, uh, task committee together with the organization team uh, they choose uh, three main parameters for the for the racing. Uh, so the first one is minimum distance. I think here it's seven kilometers. So every person who will fly less than minimum distance, uh, they will get the same amount of points. Normally, it's not that much. And also, it uh, uh, it also it's very important to say sometimes if the task will be valid or not because if the certain amount of people won't reach the minimum distance then normally the task is not valid. Uh, other two parameters which is nominal distance and nominal time uh, they are to uh, very important to say if the task is uh, if the task is good for the day, if the task is good for the area, 
So normally the nominal distance is the distance uh, which is normally flown at the area we, we have the competition. So I don't know, here is probably like 40 Ks? 30 Ks, yeah. Uh, so, and nominal distance is, uh, and nominal time are uh, very uh, close together, so it, the nominal time is dependent on how long do we have nominal distance. So, besides all these parameters, the most important are uh, things we, we see around. So, when the task committee is working, uh, they need to know ARIA very well. So, here in task committee we have uh, Yuri Vidic, we have Gasper, uh, who know the ARIA, I think, the best of the, everybody who ever been flying here. Uh, every day, the organization gives to uh, task committee weather forecast uh, they can work on and uh, decide where it's safe to go where it's not safe to go uh, what we are capable to to do uh, also very important is to design the proper task for uh, for the people who are in the comp so uh, it's also different uh, task setting for the comps like world cup or world championships and different tasks are set for for comps like here, Serial Cup or other FAI2 comps. Uh, also time of the year is very important because it uh, it's uh, the time we have uh, during the day we can spend for flying. So now in September we don't have so much time. Uh, the days are much shorter than in June when we can fly easily 100 to 150 Ks. Uh, without any hassle, uh, so now probably setting tasks above 100 k's would be difficult. Uh, other local conditions are very important too. That's why the most of the task committees uh, are the local pilots uh, or the pilots who are flying in the in the place a lot. So like valley winds, uh, different uh, local. Uh, conditions like uh, breezes, sea breeze, uh, or any other things that can happen. Uh, how was before and how is it now? Uh, maybe some of you who are competing like five or more years ago, uh, they remember that most of the tasks uh, were with uh, 400 meter cylinders still older instruments, they, they uh, from default, they have 400 meter cylinders. Uh, nowadays, uh, it's totally different. Uh, we, we fly a task with really big cylinders, and the distances between cylinders are much bigger. Uh, why like this? Uh, it's very easy to, to say, because uh, there are much more many roads uh, to take, so we can divide the whole field in smaller groups. Uh, you can choose many different options to fly. Like you, here, you can see a task from the World Cup uh, in uh, France that had finished a couple of years, a uh, couple of days before. Uh, so we can see the cylinders are really big, like 20, 30 kilometers uh, radius. Uh, in Macedonia, we were flying even with cylinders like 70 or 80 kilometers uh, radius. So with uh, that big cylinders, we have plenty of options. We can go, the cylinders are so big that they are almost like lines. So we can uh, touch the cylinder in many different places. Uh, also, distances between cylinders are often uh, very big. So. Uh, it uh, enables pilots to choose their own road, not only following others and flying the <coughs> only way that uh, the task committee designed. Uh, of course, there will be different tasks on the flatlands and different tasks on in the mountains. Uh, for sure, in the flatlands, uh, the wind is a uh, very important factor also in the mountains, but in the flatlands 
decided uh, if we will go downwind or we can go to closed, uh, closed task. So here you can see one of the tasks from the Europeans uh, where we had only two cylinders, very big cylinders as I was uh, telling you before. Uh, so with this task there was quite strong north wind. Uh, so uh, task committee decided to fly downwind but uh, not to be it's too easy. Uh, they decided to do some zigzags, so we had to fly basically all the time side wind uh, to make it more difficult to get to go. So for sure in the flatlands, uh, wind is very important. Also, but also the task committee has to think uh, how to set the task to make it doable. So, so there will be some pilots in goal. Another parameter which is very important is how many people we reach goal to have the 100% uh, points for the winner. And normal is around 20-30% 20 uh, 20, uh, pilots in goal to have maximum points, so 1,000 points for the winner. Uh, here we have one of the tasks from, I think, Polish Open from last uh, this season, even from this season, uh, we had it in June. Uh, so in mountains, it's a little bit different. Uh, we can fly close circuits even with stronger winds, because we can uh, we can use uh, some uh, areas where the wind is not so strong. Also, we can fly like side wind uh, on the ridge, back and forth. Uh, but what happens in the mountains, we can get lots of lee sites and proper design task uh, is the task when we take the direct road to next turn point, uh, we won't cross any dangerous uh, areas, so we won't fall in the lee site uh, with very strong winds. So the task uh, like today uh, it, it wasn't designed deep in the mountains because we still had some uh, east wind. Uh, so the organizers do want to push us in the big mountains to be in some dangerous areas. Uh, also, as you can see in the mountains, it's possible to uh, design tasks with big cylinders. Uh, with those big cylinders, we can choose uh, different route options. We had a similar situation today with our tasks with the cylinder that was on stall we could fly on stall or we could fly on polo uh, with these big cylinders it's very important to plan your own road very carefully because not always what the arrow shows us on our GPS is the right road to choose uh, so always before the task try to look on your GPS and think where would be the best place to touch the cylinder uh, always take uh, make a plan in your head like uh, try to imagine where would be the best to touch the cylinder to be the in goal the fastest but also to be safe enough because as you can see with such big cylinders uh, some roads you can choose, uh, you can get into the lee side and it can be dangerous but on the other hand you can choose very safe roads with uh, many landing options and it will be no problem. Uh, so you can see here one of the tasks also from last week from uh, France uh, with big cylinders and with red, uh, red lines you can see the uh, the road uh, through centers of the cylinders and with the blue line you can see the road uh, the optimized road that is the shortest road from uh, from start to to the goal so you can see it's totally different the the red and the blue lines that they are not uh, in the same place and for sure it's, it would be the fastest to take the the blue lines but also you have to see what's below those lines and below those cylinders, so all this terrain. So sometimes it's better to go a little bit around 
to make more distance, but choose the fastest road above the ridge where it will be working well and you won't fail in the big sink so you can finish the task. Uh, here is the task from today. Probably later uh, the winner will do the debriefing, but I decided to, to show this flight just to show you uh, two, two cylinders we are flying today uh, where you could choose many different options. So with uh, turn point T18 on stall, uh, you could, it was so big, it was 10 kilometers radius. So you can see uh, on, the west, on the east side of stall, uh, the cylinder is almost like a straight line, so it's all, it was almost the same distance to fly on Polovnik or on Stoll. So this, uh, this, uh, this how the tasks are designed is very often. And also the last turn point before goal, it was on the other side of the valley. So if you look at the line which is uh, connecting the centers of the turn points, it looks like it would be obvious to fly on the other side of the valley but uh, getting there would be very difficult and you have to think very carefully what was your first move, where would you go to previous way waypoint and how to get to the next waypoint uh, after touching the, the previous one. So the last turn point on the other side of the, of the valley, uh, it was best to touch it on, on the north side and <coughs> I was I saw very often today that people who wanted to do the last turn point they were not following the optimized road but they were looking at the GPSs and just the arrows showing the center of the turn point so they were going to the center of the turn point touching the turn point and then looking that they have to go a lot si to the side to get back to the ridge so take carefully yes. and what I advise you is after all the briefings, uh, after every briefing, uh, go on the side, take five, ten minutes, and prepare very carefully to the task. Sit with your friends, more experienced ones, try to think what would be the best road, uh, try to analyze it very carefully, and then try to uh, do what you planned, really. Because uh, later in the year, I see like, it's uh, very often it looks like uh, ships going one after another and only the first one is thinking and the rest uh, is just following uh, but just try to do the task uh, how you thought at the beginning uh, it would look like very often a bit at the beginning maybe your choices will be wrong and you will think that yeah those other guys did it much better but most of them were just following try to do uh, your own plan and after one season, two seasons of competing you will see that it will be re really reward re rewarding uh, because only in this, uh, in this way you can win comps in the future doing your own plans and flying your own, not only following. Yeah, uh, what I said before, do your job and practice. So not only follow like on this picture, follow everybody each other. Uh, some, very often it's the only way to fly in big groups, but sometimes try to think and decide, okay, this group is doing a mistake, I should go different way. And yeah, be independent with the decisions. Uh, about practice, you can practice what I was telling before. Uh, especially like you are visiting here such a valley very open not only for cons just for free flying uh, you have turn points in your instruments uh, after flying all these typical tasks here like going to Jamona and back like seven days a week every day the same same job try to think about something else trying to, to do something more difficult flying task it's not only about distance it's mostly about doing something new, something which is original, a little bit more difficult, maybe the distance won't be so long, but after the, this flight you'll be, I think, much more happy than doing 200 kilometers flight. So try to do some interesting flights, not only long flights. Uh, you can practice it also at home, 
now in different places in Europe and also all over the world, like in our places in Poland. Uh, we have uh, for every place there are a couple of tasks set, so you can practice task flying uh, during your normal practice days when you go during the weekends for, for flying for fun. So you don't have to go downwind, you can try something totally different. Uh, I think it will be all. So if anybody has any questions, they are more than welcome. Okay, thank you, Michal.